today's Clean and Green Summit, we're gonna try something different. Last year the summit was indoors, this year it's out in the neighborhood. And if you're in a great neighborhood like the Mission, we need to go out and see what they're doing in this neighborhood to make it a cleaner, greener, safer place to live. So we're gonna go out today and we're gonna look at the greenest house in San Francisco. We're gonna look at permeable landscaping where people in the neighborhood are chopping up the sidewalks and putting plants in the ground so less water goes in the sewer system and it's a greener place to live. We're also gonna check out a community garden and also Balmy Alley, the most famous alley in San Francisco. This alley is covered in murals. Previously they were gang tags, now they're an expression of art and creation. So it's gonna be an amazing day out here in the neighborhoods and we're looking forward to catching up with some of those folks right now. This is Daniel Holmesy. We're out here in the neighborhood at the site of the permeable landscaping exhibit that's being put in place by Plant SF. And we're lucky to have with us Astrid Hayarte, who's the greening director for Mayor Gavin Newsom here in San Francisco. Astrid, tell us a little bit about your role here in the city and, and why you think coming out in the neighborhood today really makes a difference when we're talking to people about the environment. I truly believe that empowering grassroots greening is one of the core things we need to move forward in terms of greening the entire city. And greening could be in various shades of green. We can do permeable uh, landscaping like we see today here or we can talk about permeable paving so there's various degrees of greening we can do. This is the permeable landscaping strategy that Plant SF led by Jane Martin has been advocating here in the city. If I'm not mistaken this actual bulb out was built in the 70s and then her team came in and has actually managed to remove a lot of the concrete to put in these plants. It's certainly beautiful but what other benefit does it have? Just simple opening the ground to have more permeable ground, whether it's landscape or it's permeable paving, we can make sure that those rainwater absorbs slowly, that it doesn't burden the entire city combined sewer system, where that will become a problem down the road. We know in the Mission District specifically, this area there are the lowest uh, in the geographic location and, and geology also the absorption of it there are uh, lots of flooding problems we all need to do the screening hand in hand and shoulder to shoulder we all in it together this is our city this is our community So we're on the walking tour of the Clean and Green Neighborhood Empowerment Network Summit and we're in Balmy Alley, one of the most famous alleys in San Francisco. Why? Because the neighborhood took on this challenge. They said, you know what, this place is covered in uh, graffiti and such, let's take it back. Let's put murals on the walls. But look, at they're celebrating their cultural icons. This home right here, you've got Frida Kylo. They planted this great, lovely gardenia in the wisteria. Over here again, you've got great imagery of their homeland and the issues they're facing and some of their famous educators. This is what neighborhood empowerment is all about, is people saying, you know what, we've got a problem, we know what the solution is, we're gonna take the lead. And this is what empowerment's all about. So we're here at the Treat Commons Community Garden. I'm here with Tree, who's one of the big advocates in this community um, for this type of action. Tell, Tree, tell us a little bit about your organization and what your role is in the community. We uh, run a community garden that has private and common spaces. I can see why you take such great pride in it. I mean, this is amazing. Tell us a little bit about what, what's this on our right here? This, this is an apricot tree, but you've grafted in plums and all these other amazing things. Right, uh, my, my uh, thought about this garden is that it's very small, so we want to try to get as much as we can and experiment and uh, see what grows here in this climate. So uh, what we do is we grow the trees flat to take up less space. We uh, graft onto these trees. You can put like uh, plums or different kinds of apricots on these, and then you have a variety of fruit that's uh, harvestable for a longer season. This is a purple carrot. Wow. You can you know, buy in the store, organically grown. Carrots are usually heavily sprayed, but these are not. And uh, they're really orange inside. Well, cosmic purple carrot. So community gardens are great because uh, people get a chance to try things that they you know, can't usually get in stores and uh, share them with their uh, neighbors, you know, and. So tell us, tell us about the farm stand concept that you have. Well, the farm stand is, um, comes out of, I, I've been running food programs in the neighborhood for a long time. I thought maybe we should get people to use their space, uh, their gardens, their backyards, empty lots, uh, community gardens, 
to share produce together. The farm stand is just uh, every week we're here one to three on Sundays and uh, I'm trying to figure out how to grow as much food as I can and people bring me extra food that they have in their garden. We bring it and share it with people that come, especially low-income people and people on tight budgets. My idea is that food shouldn't be just for rich people but for all of us that uh, want to have uh, fresh food and for people that don't have gardens, the farm stand uh, is a place where people that can share their produce with each other. Thank you.